Hi guys, you're welcome to Dr. Mo's blog. Today we're going to be discussing another very intriguing molecule called melatonin. Now melatonin is an amino acid of sorts that is synthesized from the amino acid tryptophan. Now there are two sources of melatonin within the body. The first source is the pineal gland, which is a small gland at the back of the brain. This is responsible for production of extracellular melatonin. And extracellular melatonin represents 5% of the total melatonin in the body. 95% of the, of the melatonin produced in the body, however, is produced by all the cells in the body. And this particular melatonin is intracellular and it is used up within the cells. It doesn't enter the circulation. So the only source of extracellular melatonin is the pineal gland. Now, what does the pineal, what does the, does melatonin, what does it do? Melatonin is an antioxidant. It's a powerful antioxidant. And you know, the body, as it's producing energy, just like a petrol or a diesel engine, it produces energy by burning carbon atoms into carbon dioxide and water. While in the petrol engine, it happens in one explosive uh, uh, state, one explosion that results in sudden release of large amounts of energy at the same time, resulting in production of a lot of heat and the movement of the pistons within the engine, the body prefers to do it in a sequential step, in about 20 to 30 or more sequential steps, so that the energy from the, from the hydrocarbons, that is glucose, fatty acids and all that, is released slowly into the, into the body in a manageable form. You end up resulting in production of ATP. These reactions usually occur in the mitochondria. Now, just like in the petrol engine, where a lot of heat, where only about 30% of the energy resulting from burning of hydrocarbons is used, produces kinetic energy to move the car. The rest is released as heat. And when this heat is released, you need a cooling system, either water or air or a combination of two to keep the engines cool so that cool so that they will, the engine will not go bust. So in the body too, despite the fact that this the combustion occurs very gradually in about 30 or more steps, it is still as inefficient as what happens in the petrol engine. Only about 30% of this is converted into energy. The rest into uh, useful energy in form of ATP. About 60 something percent of this is released as heat, which keeps the body warm. And it also release, results in what is called reactive oxygen species. Now this reactive oxygen species include peroxi peroxide, superoxide, and hydroxyl moieties are very destructive. They tend to attack Enzymes attack the cell walls and cause a lot of damage, what is called lipid peroxidation or oxidation. So it is important that as the uh, metabolism is ongoing, catabolism of glucose, fatty acids uh, is producing this reactive oxygen species, there is a need for melatonin to be produced to mop up this reactive oxygen species. So what happens is that in, uh, during the daytime, each cell has a mechanism for producing melatonin. And this is produced by one of the enzymes in the mitochondria, part of the electron transport chain. This enzyme causes melatonin to be produced. And this melatonin now mops up all the uh, free radicals or free, uh, free oxygen, reactive oxygen species. Now this is where red light comes in. Red light and near infrared light 
tends to stimulate, okay, has stimulate this enzyme to activate the enzyme to produce plenty of melatonin. So during the daytime, as you are exposed to the, the radiation from the sun, melatonin production is quite active, and it, that is the intracellular melatonin is quite is produced in large amounts to help to mop up all the reactive oxygen species. So that's how red light, the role red light plays in maintaining the health of cells. So what happens at night? At night, there's a backup system, and that is where the, where the pineal gland comes in. Now, when light, as the, 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 the light from the sun begins to diminish, some photosensitive cells in your eyes will send signals to the pineal gland, and then pineal gland will start producing large amounts of melatonin. It is producing this melatonin in the night as a backup system to help cells to cope up with reactive oxygen species that would have been produced in the night as a result of metabolism because the effect of the sunlight is no longer there. So the, the pineal gland goes into overdrive and produces a lot of extracellular, uh, uh, produces a lot of uh, melatonin which is released into the blood and circulates and does the function that it's supposed to, to do. So that is how the body is able to prevent uh, the, the mop up reactive, reactive oxygen species, both in the daytime and in the night time. So why is it important for us to know this? It is important to know this because um, the, a, a defect in this system is believed to be responsible for most of the chronic diseases that we see, where there is a defective uh, um, uh, system where melatonin is not produced in sufficient quantities to mop up reactive oxygen species. These will accumulate and make the mitochondria become dysfunctional. And it is this mitochondrial dysfunction that is thought to be responsible for diseases like Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Parkinsonism, cancer, diabetes, and all most of these chronic diseases that you see. It's essentially results from defective mitochondria, which because of the defects in production of melatonin to mop up reactive oxygen species. So how can we help this system? Well, we can help the system by exposing ourselves to red light or red near infrared light. And a lot of people are doing that now. And it's believed that red infrared light through this mechanism helps to heal skin, the skin helps to heal, prevent aging, dissolves wrinkles, helps to prevent the effects of aging and uh, remove wrinkles from the skin. Red light also, by this mechanism, helps to control blood sugar levels, prevents people from developing diabetes mellitus, may also uh, prevent people from developing chronic diseases, neurological diseases. Red light therapy to augment this system is also believed to help the eye, uh, to reduce the effects of aging on the eye so that age-related eye problems like presbyopia is prevented to a large extent by red light therapy. Now, melatonin increase in the night also it makes the brain cells to rest and therefore makes you to go to sleep. So it's important the circadian fluctuations in extracellular melatonin is important for healthy sleep. And healthy sleep is important for 
healthy living. So do we need supplemental melatonin? Well, that's debatable. Some people believe that they can take supplemental melatonin to help them sleep, particularly people who suffer from diseases of, of sleep deri derivation. Then there's another thing that, another disease entity that red light therapy helps. This is called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. These are people who during the winter time, because of the reduced amount of sunlight and effectively the reduced amount of near infrared light that they receive from the sun become depressed during the winter seasons. And so when such people are exposed to red light or near infrared light, they tend to improve. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please try and support my channel, which is solely sponsored by me, by subscribing, sharing with your friends and family, and and hit the notification bell so that each time I produce a new video, you will be notified. Thank you very much. Bye.